Hey everyone, what's going on? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video, we want to look at PCIe 5.0 and what it means for the crypto mining community. For my impatient viewers out there, it means absolutely nothing. However, with PCIe 5.0 on the horizon, it also can bring a new power standard, which is where we need to pay attention. First, let's look at the generational leaps from PCIe 5.0 and lower so first off pcie 1.0 was around 250 megabytes over a single lane and was capable of 2.5 giga transfers with the arrival of pcie 2.0 it was double that at 500 megabytes and 5 giga transfers with 4.0 the increase was to 1.97 gigabytes and 16 giga transfers over the previous pcie 3.0 generation of 985 megabytes and 8 giga transfers so PCIe 5.0, the direct successor of 4.0, yet again will double the bandwidth and giga transfer rate, allowing the data to be transferred at a significantly faster speeds, 32 giga transfers per second, or 32 GTs, and 3.94 gigabytes per second. PCIe 4.0 was already crazy fast, and we don't need to look far, but at the NVMe storage and capabilities that those drives provided to us. PCIe 5.0 will, will remain fully backwards compatible with previous generations and its requirements will change to accommodate the higher speeds. For example, motherboards supporting PCIe 5.0 will need to add greater capabilities under the hood to handle signal noise and signal loss. This is because going faster may encounter more signal integrity issues and that needs to be accounted for to keep errors at bay as much as possible. PCIe 5.0 is already in development and this will be helped out in terms of bandwidth increase and signal integrity by using PAM4 signaling. PCIe 5.0 however will need to use more conventional methods to make space for these higher speeds, better quality motherboard traces and thicker PCBs with more layers to minimize signal loss and impedance and we've seen that as at least I've seen it over the motherboard generations as they increase the number of layers of the PCB. Moving on, uh, we found that even the most capable graphics card, I know it may not be the latest and greatest, but the RTX 2080 Ti doesn't even take or make full use of the bandwidth available of a PCIe Gen 3 by 16 slot yet. So PCIe 5.0 would be overkill for most gamers. Like the benefits of moving from Gen 3 to Gen 4, PCIe 5 speeds will be the most beneficial for those who need faster access to NVMe storage drives and RAID configurations. So data centers, corporations, enter, uh, enterprise level devices. You'll often notice that PCIe slots and cards are designated with a numeric value that's preceded by an X. The configuration includes PCIe by one, by two, by four, by eight, by 16, and even by 32. These numbers indicate how many lanes are available. The higher the number, the faster the data can travel. PCIe by one means that there's only one lane, while PCIe by six, six, 16, oh my goodness, I couldn't say that, but PCIe by 16 indicates that there's only 16 lanes available. Cards and slots, can be mixed and matched despite the number of lanes indicated by each component with a data bandwidth determined by the slower part. For example, if you have a PCIe by four slot on your motherboard, you can connect a PCIe by one card, which we've seen by included adapters, uh, the UBIT adapter being plugged into a by four, by one, whatever it may be. Here, your bandwidth is capped at the card's signal available or single available lane, which is one bit per second. Conversely, if you insert a, buy, a PCIe by 8 card into a by 4 slot, it will only travel at half the bandwidth compared to the card that was inserted into the PCIe by 8 slot. So as far as impacts PCIe 5.0 will have on the mining community, again, there is nothing. However, power is the biggest thing. NVIDIA may have preempted PCIe 5.0 power connector as brand new PSUs revealed, and we've seen this with ASUS revealing their new Thor power supply. The power requirements of high-end graphics cards continue to trend upwards, and we've all seen this. Cards with triple eight-pin PCIe connectors are commonplace. Three 151, uh, excuse me, three 150-watt PCIe eight-pin connectors can deliver a total of 450 watts, 
and when combined with the 75 watts available from the PCIe slot, a high-end card has at least 525 watts on tap. But even 525 watts may not be enough power for future graphics cards. We can see here in this pinout, and we've seen this pin already from the Founders Edition 3090-3080, where NVIDIA has a single 12-pin connector, and then uh, their adapter splits out to where you have to connect two 8-pins. The new connector is designed to deliver at least 600 watts, while a single connector is definitely more user-friendly. It certainly doesn't bode well for GPU efficiency going forward. Are we getting to the stage where sub-1000 PSUs are no longer or will no longer be enough? And this is where, as the PCIe 5.0 standard rolls out, we need to keep an eye on because if we get these GPUs with these new standards and new connectors, the commonplace splitters, 8 pins, whatever it may be, may not be enough. Yes, NVIDIA gives us one with their card where we can connect to 8 pins, but if we have a card that's pulling well over 600 watts, even if it's tuned, let's say we could get it down to 300 watts, say like the 3090, um, those splitters may not be able to hang. And so the new splitters and new capabilities and the gauge of the wires on those splitters will have to be increased. So keep an eye on this situation as it rolls out, as we get new hardware, new motherboards, the new standard gets in place, primarily at the power side. So even though you may not be connecting to a PCIe 5.0 slot and you're just connecting the card to a riser, you're still gonna be pulling 75 watts probably through the riser, but watch the connectors. All right, make sure you're not drawing too much power through your splitters. And remember what I've mentioned in many of my videos in the past. Uh, if you're only connecting one six pin and you're splitting out that connection, that entire thread or entire strand is only rated for 216 watts. Eight pins the way to go, and that's why I connect all my GPUs directly to my server power supply or on one single strand from my ATX power supply. I'm not trying to piggyback or daisy chain multiple GPUs into one because I don't want a fire hazard and I don't want, want you to have one either. That's pretty much going to do it for me today though. Uh, please do me a favor on the way out, hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell to stay up to date with what's going on with the channel as well as check out any of the links in the description that greatly helps us out. I appreciate all your support. You all have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.